Hey everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome. I'm so excited that you're here today. I have really fun embossing paste tricks and tips for you. Uh, Stampin' Up! just released embossing paste with their new catalog starting on June 1st and you can purchase it now from me and there's so many fun things you can do with it. So let me just go over. We've got a tube of embossing paste here. It's four ounces and then some palette knives that you can also purchase from Stampin' Up! And then I've also got some really great masks here that are called Happy Patterns Masks, and those are offered through Stampin' Up! as well. Now the paste, I do want to give you a little warning. When you open it up, it looks like the jar is half empty. That is actually okay. It's supposed to be like that. Um, I've also got a little acrylic plate here that I'm going to do some mixing on, and then we're just going to get started with my first card. I've just used post-it note tape to adhere the card down to my grid paper. You do want to make sure that your card stays in place. You don't want it moving around on you because if it moves it's going to mess up your stenciling or your um, embossing. I chose to use uh, Melon Mambo, Bermuda Bay, and Elegant Eggplant for my colors today. I'm opening all of the reinkers first because once I get this embossing paste down on the acrylic plate it begins drying immediately. So you definitely want to have everything in place ready to go before you start um, using it because the edges of it and stuff like that will start to dry fairly quick. It's really amazing how quick the paste dries on the paper. So you definitely want to make sure everything's ready to go. I'm getting my mask in place where I want it and then I'm gonna use my post-it note tape again to just adhere it down to my grid paper so the mask does not move around. Preventing things from moving and shifting while you're using the embossing paste is pretty essential in this process. If stuff moves around, you're gonna have a mess. I also keep wet naps or wet ones or um, baby wipes close by um, because if you need to clean anything off, you need to do it right away. Okay, so you can see here, there wasn't much paste in here. Um, it's at the bottom and it does come with four ounces and that's because it needs air or room inside the container for expanding air. And I learned that from my friend Christy who is a chemistry teacher. She's actually one of my team members as well. So another tip that I don't want to forget to mention is when you put your embossing paste back into the container, try to push it down away from the lid. Like here you see that it's um, up around the lid edge and I didn't push it down. That will actually dry. And here you see I'm using those wet ones to immediately wipe that embossing paste off. This stuff dries really quick and you know, it does say paste in the name. So it's sticky and it's hard when it dries. And once it dries, boy, it's a bugger. So it's really good to move quickly and wipe things away. All right, so I'm putting a single drop of color um, from my reinkers into each one of these um, embossing paste clumps, and then I'm going to mix them together with my palette knives. And um, really, obviously, the more paste you use um, with less ink, the lighter your color will be, and the more ink you use with less paste, the darker your color will be. So you can see I have this really, really bold, dark, um, beautiful eggplant color here and I'm just going to get started by scooping it up and applying it to my card. Now um, you can see that I'm kind of using a flat edge and I'm going over this. You can't tell in the video but I'm going over this with a pretty light hand so that it's not smashing down in any certain area. I don't want that. I don't want smashing and smushing to happen. I originally was going to um, speed this video up because it was originally pretty long. I was able to cut out some things, but I went ahead and kept it in real time because I wanted you to see how quickly this dries and I wanted you to see kind of the process and how long it takes. So you can see here I'm mixing up that Melon Mambo and getting it onto my um, spatula knife is what I call it. I don't really know what it's called, but that's what I call it. and. Um, I'm going up into the elegant eggplant with this and kind of pulling some of that elegant eggplant down. So I'm kind of mixing the two colors. Now you can get some real mixing going on. If I were to reach way up into that eggplant and pull down, it's going to mix a lot. 
but I didn't want to do that. I just wanted a little bit of mixing where the two colors meet. So that's kind of what I achieved here. And then I'm just going to clean again my palette knives because I obviously don't want to mix the pink into the um, blue, the Bermuda Bay. So I went through a lot of wet wipes when I was doing this. Um, you do want to stick with baby wipes because other types of wipes can have chemicals that could possibly harm your um, items. So I always stick with baby wipes because they're fairly gentle. All right, so we've got the Bermuda Bay mixed up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and scoop that up and add it to my project. And I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to reach into that uh, Melon Mambo and pull it down kind of into the Bermuda Bay and you'll start to see a little bit of a purple color formed. And that's because red and blue make purple. And Melon Mambo is red based and um, Bermuda Bay has got a blue base. So you're seeing some purple mixing there. It's really beautiful. Now I could mix them more, but I was happy with this. So when I peeled it off, I got this gorgeous leftover medallion and it's just stunning. And so I was super happy with how it turned out. Now you could see my mask is a mess. So I actually had to go off camera quickly here. I just kind of wiped it. But what I did is I actually had to stop rolling and I had to go to my kitchen sink and I had to wash everything because, um, you can see the paste over on the right hand side is drying very quickly and I couldn't have it all dried up. So this is what the card looks like when it was all finished. I added this beautiful congrats um, sentiment using my die cuts and some sequins and that was it. When you do something with embossing paste, um, it's so beautiful and striking and that you really don't have to do a lot else um, to the card. And you can keep your cards pretty darn simple when you use embossing paste. Okay, so here I've adhered everything down and I'm using my leftover embossing paste to just create a couple of little um, interesting areas here on this card base. Now, I'm not going to cover this entire card base. I don't want to do that with this one. So it was completely fine that I was just using leftovers. Also, I allowed my paste to kind of go into some other areas on this mask without completely going into, um, into every hole. Some of them are partially filled is what I'm saying. And that was intentional. I wanted it to be that way because I wanted to create kind of a messy um, look. So here I'm just mixing some of that Bermuda Bay with that elegant eggplant. This was just what I had left over, so I wanted to make sure I used it up. And then I'm gonna go down in the bottom corner here and add a little bit of the Bermuda Bay, and then go in and add a little bit of the elegant eggplant. And it's really just gonna create this really cool kind of, um, I don't know, textured background with little pops of color that then I can add some embellishments to to finish this card off and it's just gonna be really pretty. So once I got everything laid down the way I wanted it to, or wanted it, I peeled away that mask and this is what I had left. And I loved it and this is what I did. I took a heart, a die cut heart and heat embossed happy birthday on it and then added sequins and I was done. So super simple. Okay, my last card is, um, or I should say embossing paste tip is I'm um, using this brick uh, background or mask and I'm going to um, attach it down and I really wanted to create bricks, actual bricks. So what I did is I taped everything off and then I got some of my embossing paste out and mixed it with Cajun Craze. Cajun Craze is like the perfect brick color. So I went ahead and mixed that. Now I try to be pretty frugal with my embossing paste because I like it to last. And when I laid it down here, I was like, mm, that might be a little much. So I scooped some back off and I wish I wouldn't have done that because it ended up that I did need more. And I'll show you what I did. Um, and it actually ended up being a happy mistake. So you see here how this is very sticky at the top and I'm trying to push it in and it won't go. That is because I've left it at the top and now it's dried there. Once it dries and creates like a crust, it's over. There's nothing you can do. Same with your tools, your palette knives, your masks, everything. It's a very difficult to get it off. So the thing that I recommend is if you do allow your 
palette knives, your masks, or something to sit with this embossing paste and then you want to remove it, take your masks, like this is what I did last night, I took my masks and I soaked them overnight in um, a little bit of hot water with a little tiny bit of dish soap and then they came clean this morning when I used a um, sponge on them. So just, you know, just know that if you don't get it cleaned off right away, you will be able to get them clean. It's just going to take extra steps on your part to, to get them cleaned up. So you can see here, I am really struggling to get coverage on this whole card base because I just did not use enough um, embossing paste. So I ended up having to mix more and I'm going to show you that here in just a second because there's, um, you're thinking like, well, how are you going to match the color perfectly? Well, the story is that I didn't, I couldn't, I could not get the colors to match. So, um, I ended up with darker bricks on the bottom, which ended up being okay because it just kind of almost looks shadowy. And honestly, in, on the card in real life, you really can't even tell because I ended up covering most of the card base with my embellishments. So um, you can't even really tell that there's a difference in color. However, um, one of the things I want to share with you is that I'm thinking, I'm feeling like it would probably have been better for me to just err on the side of caution and use a little more embossing paste than I may have needed so that I could have had the full coverage. Okay, so you can see here I'm adding the one drop of Cajun Craze, but it's going to make this little tiny bit of embossing paste super dark. But like I said, it ended up being fine. So my very favorite thing about using embossing paste is that um, it's very soothing to me to use. So you can see how, here how much darker it is than the top. It's very soothing to use. I know that probably sounds so silly, but there is something about the paste like smushing into all of those little cracks and crannies and nooks and crannies and crevices that just makes me feel happy people it's weird I don't know I can't describe it to you I don't know why um, but it does it makes me happy and it makes me feel joy so um, I'm just finishing up my brickwork here and uh, only if only brickwork was actually this easy right um, and then that's it. And then the card is really cute. I went ahead and added one of those adorable bike framelits and a happy birthday sentiment and a little puppy dog riding along. So this is a great masculine birthday card. Okay, if you want to see other videos from me, you can click on either one of the images that you see here. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel by clicking the little circle that has my face in it. Visit my blog for details on freebies that are coming up in the month of July. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I hope that you have an amazing weekend. Bye-bye.